Roger Christofferson here again with another first listen review. Um, if you like listening to somebody babble about music that they love without the previews and the snippets and just like listening to people talk and share their thoughts on music, this is the place. And today we are talking about one that I was really looking forward to. Um, no shame here at all. I actually really, really like this band a lot. I'm talking about Amaranth and they have a new album out called The Catalyst. And I've actually been listening to this band a very, very long time. It's kind of funny because I like symphonic rock. You know, it's just one thing I discovered back when I heard, I saw Camelot live a few years ago, like many, many years ago. And just the show, the atmosphere, the everything just kind of drew me in. So I started trying to get into that, uh, that band. And, uh, you know, I was checking out stuff. Amaranth came up as one of the uh, choices. And... It's strange because I guess you know I can see the similarities there, but they get kind of labeled as a uh, symphonic rock band, but they're really not at all. <clears throat> but what I saw was like a live video, and they had three vocalists. You know, they had a female singer, they had another male singer clean, and they had this other guy doing the, the harsh vocals. And it was really fast, upbeat, energetic music. And I was like, wow, who's this? And uh, you know, so that was way back. It was their first or second album. I can't remember, but. Um, you know, I, I played all the time. My kids were like, "What are you listening to?" And they started listening to them as well, and still to this day, actually really like them. So <clears throat> it's—I don't even know how you describe them because they're not symphonic rock. But funnily enough, um, on this album, it's the first time I've actually ever heard anything that sounds um, symphonic at all. Really, um, I don't—I'll I, I, try to describe it. It's a mixture of. Um, like very heavy elements of symphonic rock, the the uh, you know, the guitar and drums, big vocals, big choruses, but that's really high energy, like the energy of power metal, I'll say, but it doesn't sound like power metal either. But they add a lot of uh, like keyboards, but not like violins and stuff like that. It's like almost like like really heavy pop sounds, but I don't know, it's not really that either. Although there's a little bit of that in this album too. Um, it's kind of all thrown together. They have like the harsh vocals with really clean singing and it just kind of all mixes together somehow. And all their music is really high energy. I remember watching the, uh, uh, Herman Lee, I think it was, uh, from uh, Dragon Force has this little channel and he tries to show you how to write in the styles of different bands. And uh, he actually had Elise come on and guest on this episode that he did where he showed you how to write an Amaranth song. And uh, it did sound like one after she, and she sang on it. It was kind of funny. Um, so they do have a certain formula, but it works for them. I don't know of any other band that sounds exactly like this. Um, but I really like them. I like them a lot. Uh, and obviously, because I'm still ranting about them. But the one thing, um, they don't they don't like veer too much from their formula. Like their albums are pretty consistent. You you know what you're gonna get, and that's not a bad thing. I like bands. I mean, you know, ACDC is like one of these bands. You know what you're gonna get. And they don't obviously these they don't sound anything like ACDC, but you know what you're gonna get when you buy an ACDC album. When you buy an Amaranth album, you you know what you're gonna get. And on this one, I knew what I was gonna get, and there was a few extra surprises thrown in, and uh, I'm gonna mention those right now. Uh, the first thing I noticed, and I was about three or four songs in when I noticed this one, uh, that they combined the vocals a lot more. And what I mean by that is on previous recordings. They would, uh, you know, feature like one, maybe two of the vocalists, and then just kind of like throw in a little bit of the other, you know, throw in a little bit of the harsh vocals here and there, or have Elise sing a lot of the stuff, and then like every now and then throw in some snippets of the other two guys singing. And uh, on this album, like almost every song, they had just taken turns combining all three of them singing. It's funny because they have the, the uh, title song here, The Catalyst, Starts with a little bit of, you, like, you hear a little bit of uh, the leaves there just kind of doing like an ah or something like that, and then it comes in, boom, with uh, the harsh vocals just just right from the start, and that kicks in and uh, doesn't stop from that point on. It's uh, 12 songs on here, <clears throat> unless you get the bonus one with Fading Like a Flower. They added that in, you know, the cover version of the rock set, which they do a great job on, I think. And uh, they're all really short songs. I mean, just barely over three minutes which everything here and uh you know the style of music and uh with them it works great because it's very high energy and i think the fact that they're shorter 
songs and it, it, it doesn't feel like you're overwhelmed or fatigued by the end of it so and you know that's the last thing you want what you want with an album i think as an artist is you want people to want to listen to it again not be tired of it by the time they're done with it and there's some bands out there that put out these albums that are really long and not everything on it's great and uh you know you're like man i feel like a lost you know a few pounds just uh, listening to that one uh you don't get that feeling from this one even though very high energy like i keep saying in fact there's only like one slower song on here and uh that's the song stay a little while and talk about a cool just epic ballad i guess is a way to describe it no harsh vocals i noticed on that one it's the only one like that on the whole album that they didn't really um share that but uh, it, just, it just builds great, really uh, uh, dynamic, and just it's one of the songs you just want to put it on repeat and hear it again. It's really, really good. There's a, like I mentioned, they add a little touch of the symphonic stuff here. The song Damnation Flame is, I think that might have been the first single too, I'm not really sure, but um, notice that they uh, did add a little bit of the symphonicness there with a symphony sounding uh, keyboards there and then a really big chorus. It's the only time I ever noticed anything that even sounds symphonic to me at all. They, Like I said, they like adding in these little, um, you know, a lot of keyboards, but it's not like the keyboards you would expect to hear. Like it's very fast and really uh, percussive keyboard type stuff going on. And uh, I'm finding it very difficult to describe it because I can't think of anything else that really sounds like, like what they do. But... Um, until they get to, I think it was the song. This is one of these. Sometimes I sit down and put, you know, the headphones on, listen to it, or let's have it on the stereo. And as I'm, you know, in the room, or a lot of times I'd be like driving around listening to the stuff. And this is one where I was doing a lot of traveling yesterday, so it was playing uh, as I was driving. So I'm trying to remember which song it was on here, but I believe it was a song uh, revision where uh, I remember what kicked in, I was like, what? it was a weird, the keyboard, uh, they tried something a little bit new here, and it gave me like a flashback to like uh, Cher's uh, I Believe, or Believe in Love After Love, whatever the name of that song was, don't know, I'm not a real big Cher fan, but uh, a little bit of that weird keyboard, uh, you know, vocal effect going on with the auto-tune, that's the first time I ever heard that, it had a little bit of that feel to it, they weren't doing that exact same thing there, but the keyboard sound that they used, sounded like Cher's vocal and believe if that makes any sense and uh, I was like ooh that's a little different a little weird but it worked somehow it worked and it was still heavy they made sure to kick in the uh, the guitars and the drums real quick with that one and make sure they didn't lose any of that the heaviness of it and uh, pretty much <clears throat> every song from that point on kind of like except for the ballad follows that formula but I'm going on a little bit long here about this one so I don't want to do that um, I don't want to become one of those albums that uh, you know people get tired of listening to but I really like this album not a clunker on it high energy uh, they got the one slower song in the middle and a kick butt version of uh, fading like a flower um, this I don't know it was a great way to start uh, or, you know actually this is I listened to it yesterday so I was gonna say start Friday but I actually let's got this one early uh, listened to it all day yesterday and uh, I was really really happy with it so anyway feel free as always to share your thoughts on this band or this album if you've heard it and uh, as always like share and subscribe to keep this music alive this is one of those bands that has not become as big as they should I, I don't think they this is they've kind of come up with their own style of music and I just feel like this is one of those bands that more people should hear myself you know personal opinion there but that's all this is, just our opinions, and feel free to share them. Uh, until next time, we will see you.